The biggest challenge when creating quarantine portraits was the lo-fi image coming through on the video camera. I use video conference to reconnect with friends in other countries, to disconnect from the news, and to discuss the portrait in real time so we can make adjustments as we go. However, even though I'm receiving 30 frames per second, these could be blurry, overexposed, pixelated, or frozen in awkward moments. And on top of this, we're at the mercy of both parties' Wi-Fi connections. This is compounded when using low-res screenshots in the second session. When the video is overexposed, especially in places with bright sunlight, like Oaxaca here with Dominic, it's impossible to get both the lush greenery in the background and the darker tones of the portrait. So I have to decide between dark portrait and lush greenery, or normal portrait and overexposed greenery. In this series, I gave precedence to the portrait, so I had to accept that some sections of the painting would be pure white, and that this would make sense to the eye in the same way that it does when we see it on the computer screen. And actually, I quite like the effect of this, seen also here in Corolla and Lisa. When it comes to photo references for paintings, it's tempting to think the more high-resolution data, the better. But one of the big lessons for me in this process was how much these lo-fi elements actually helped the process. The simplifications prevented me from going too far into the details and ruining their sketchy quality. And after all, when I'm video chatting with family, I don't see a super clear image, but the emotional data definitely gets through. So as a webcam portrait artist, I take this lo-fi data and I fill in the gaps based on years of in-person portrait painting experience. I'm basically working as a data decompression tool and 3D printer.